look at your neighbor and say, you are an overcomer. Okay? You know, have you ever felt like you're up against something? Or that you're into something you could never overcome? Have you ever had a habit you feel like you just can't break or a problem that you just can't seem to fix? A situation that keeps getting worse and worse and you're starting to lose hope. I want to let you know that I'm not surprised because life brings trouble, but we have an overcomer, Jesus Christ, on the inside of us. Somebody say amen. 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 You know, there's a scripture in John 16, says this. These things I've spoken to you, Jesus says, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Another trans uh, translation of tribulation is trouble. Somebody say trouble. trouble. Amen. Tribulation is called trouble. So how many of you guys know that in this world sometimes trouble comes, but Jesus says, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Nothing is too difficult for Jesus. Jesus endured much. When he walked in this earth, he went through much, but in every time of trouble or any time that this happened, Jesus overcame. Somebody say, Jesus overcame. Now in Luke 4, the devil came to tempt Jesus. Three times he tried to get Jesus to compromise the word of God. Amen? He wanted Jesus to fall. But each time Jesus spoke the truth against the devil's lies, and he never faulted, not once. Trouble came, temptation came, but Jesus overcame. The trouble Jesus overcame was this temptation. Amen? He overcame it. Hallelujah. And, you know, obviously there's some pretty powerful addictions that are out there. And these addictions are simply hooks. Hooks that the devil wants us to get into to pull us away from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's the typical ones like alcohol and addiction or gossip or porn or all these different things that can draw us in and hurt us. But you know what? You can overcome any temptation. You can overcome any addiction because you have Jesus on the inside of you. And if he is an overcomer on the inside of you, you're an overcomer too. Somebody say, yeah. You know, in Luke 5, 17, basically what happens here is um, Jesus, the Bible says in Luke that the power to heal is present in this room and this paralytic gathers his friends up and drops them from, from a roof, okay, right in front of Jesus. And Jesus, instead of saying, you're healed, he said, your sins are forgiven you. And there were some Pharisees and some Sadducees that showed up. Trouble came. Somebody say, trouble came. Trouble was in that crowd. So what did Jesus do? He, he, he knew. He heard their thoughts. The Bible says that they were judging or discerning or they were coming against them in their brain saying, who does this man think he, he is saying that he can forgive sins? Amen. But Jesus overcame. He spoke to them and he said, what's easier? For me to say this man is healed or to, he, or to see that this man is forgiven? I'll tell you why I said this man is forgiven. Because I can forgive souls. Jesus overcame. Amen? <clears throat> Many times in my life, I've seen that when God wants to do something in my life, in my family, or in my church, that's when the devil shows up and tries to tempt me. That's when trouble comes. That's when the religious show up and start to judge me for what God is leading me to do as a pastor, or as a father, or as a husband. That's when I've been, maybe something attacks my body or my finances. I've learned that when trouble comes, usually on the other side, there's some really good news. Amen? And I believe that this is why Jesus said, you can overcome. Amen? You know, I've seen my son Miles uh, overcome a ton. And a lot of you guys are here near know a little bit about Miles. We got Miles, when he was four months old, he had a traumatic brain injury. He was in really bad shape. You know, his, his head was kind of stuck and and um, he cried all the time. And, you know, we were, we were told that, you know, Miles might not walk and Miles might not talk. And what happened was, is as young boys and uh, children started to walk and talk, Miles didn't walk and talk. We had um, uh, people coming over to the house. I don't know if you'd call them therapists, but people, the early intervention people to come and help Miles get his legs toned so he could walk or help him learn to speak and things like that. A couple times a week, these people would be coming in. One thing we noticed, though, was Victoria, who, who was just six months earlier, that Miles was watching her. He was watching her, and then he would begin to do little things that Victoria was doing. He would watch her and do something. He would watch her and do something. One of the people that were coming into our home to help Miles kind of took, saw this and said, hey, do you mind if Victoria 
um, joins the sessions with Miles. And that was one of the best things that me and Amy ever did. Because uh, Victoria would do it and Miles would try to do it too. You see, Miles didn't know that he had a brain injury. Miles didn't know that he had muscular dystrophy. All he knew was he was a normal child and he knew that if Victoria could do it, he believed on the inside that he could do it too. And I'll never forget, we decided to go outside. We had bought this little slide for the kids and a couple swings. And Victoria had learned to go up the ladder and down the slide. Up the ladder and down the slide. And so this person that was working with them would take them outside. Victoria would do it. And I noticed that Miles would get up one step and they need, then he would need to be picked up and put up. One step, picked up and put up. Over time, it turned into two steps. And then three steps because he was watching Victoria do it. And I'll never forget the day that I saw him go up the steps and down the slide. Up the steps and down the slide. See, Victoria was an overcomer, and he believed that he could do what she could do, and he believed that. He overcame that. And isn't that like Jesus in our lives? We watch him in the Gospels overcome temptation. We watch him in the Gospels overcome physical ailments. We watch him in the Gospels overcoming demons and dark things. And you have to realize and you have to know that on the inside of you, you have an overcomer. You have someone that's gone ahead of you to prepare the way for you to have eternal life, to prepare the way for your healing, to prepare the way for victory in your life. Jesus went to the disciples and he said this one by one. He said, come and follow me. He said, come and follow me. And he went to the most unqualified people and asked them to come. He went to some fish, fishermen. He said, come and follow me. He went to a tax collector. He said, come and follow me. And you know what? They came and Jesus led them into victory. And Jesus and God has a reputation. Do you know somebody in your life that maybe has a reputation for doing some really good things? or has a reputation for maybe doing some bad things. God has a reputation for leading people into victory. And if you're following him, it's just a matter of time before you too will be overcomers and walk in victory. Psalms 37, 23 through 25 says this, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Even if you fall, God is faithful to pick you up. Even if you make a mistake and you have the good heart and you want to overcome, but you're just not sure how to do it, and you're doing your best to walk in Him, and you fall, God is there to pick you up. One of my favorite scriptures is 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be to God who always... Did you hear that word? Always. Somebody say always. That's a really deep word in the Greek that means always. <laughs> always. He says, always leads them in triumph and victory. God sees the heart. Amen? And sometimes good hearts are covered with mistakes, with sin and imperfection. But God sees the potential in a good heart. Say this with me. God sees potential in me. God sees potential in me. Now, do you hear how quiet and insecure we are about that? Amen? Because it's not easier to see potential in somebody else than it is to, to even know that maybe somebody else sees potential in us. It's important to believe God, but I want to let you know that God believes in you. So say that confidently in the church. Say, God sees potential in me. Look at your neighbor. God sees potential in you. Look at your other neighbor. God sees potential in you. Amen? Jesus went, um, the Pharisees and Sadducees were all mad at Jesus. They're like, listen, Jesus, why are you always hanging with the sinners? Why are you always chilling with people that are doing wrong? And Jesus said this, I have not come to call the righteous, but I have come to call the sinner. He says, doctors reach out to the need, people need doctors when they're sick. So that's, that was his attitude in the middle of all that. So if you've struggled with sin in your life, I want to let you know that you qualify. And I don't know a single human being that doesn't struggle with sin in their life. You qualify. And if you don't believe you qualify, denial is not just a river in Egypt. <laughs> Amen? You qualify. You know, I was looking up in the scriptures. Look at this. I found this. Abraham was too old to have children. 
David was too young to fight Goliath. Timothy had ulcers. Paul and Moses were murderers. David had an affair. Jonah ran from God. Miriam was a gossip. Jeremiah was depressed and suicidal. Martha was a worrywart. But they all had something in common. They had good hearts and they loved God. And God used their weaknesses to build something for him and bring glory to him. Amen? Are there going to be days when you feel down? Yes. Are there going to be times when you want to give up? Yes. Times when you want to throw in the towel. But know this. Take heart. Jesus has overcome. Know that you are stronger than you think. You are wiser than you know. You have more in you than you could ever imagine because Jesus is alive on the inside of you, giving you strength when you need it, providing wisdom when you need it, equipping you to accomplish what seems impossible or highly unlikely to happen in your life. God is there for you. And that's why Paul said this. It is in Galatians 2.20. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me. Sometimes I feel like the devil or people around me out there on the streets are saying, you're never going to make it. It's not good enough. People on that side of the, on the sad side of the tracks are never going to want Jesus in their life. You're not a good enough preacher. You know, you stutter. You're not real earned. These things that I hear, but I always like to come back with this. It's not I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me. This is not about me, devil. This is about God in me. We are simply instruments. Today I would like to introduce to you our special speaker. Everybody say hi to the bass. Oh, what? You guys aren't happy? I, he's, he's a great, great instrument. So let's all clap happy and say hi to the bass. He's feeling a little rejected right now, but that's okay. So I need everybody just to be really quiet. We're going to give him an opportunity to play something amazing for you. Are you ready? Go. Uh, does anybody hear anything? Just a truck. Is it, is, I mean, I was expecting to hear some. Do you know why? Because it's not the instrument. It's the person playing the instrument. We are instruments. That's all. It's God moving in us and through us. And the devil wants us to think that it's about us. Amen? But it's not. It's about God. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Amen. That wasn't in my notes, so thank you, Lord. <laughs> so when you walk into that interview for a job, you can be confident. Jesus is with you, leading you through every step of the way. You're an overcomer. When you go into that doctor and you're nervous because the last few reports you've had have been bad reports that you've gotten in your past, you don't have to fear. Jesus is with you. You can overcome. You don't have to be afraid when the bills come in the mail. You're an overcomer. You don't have to worry about people talking bad behind your back. They can't hurt you. Jesus made you an overcomer. And if you follow him, you too will overcome. So take heart, church. Take joy. Jesus went on ahead of you. Following, follow him into victory. You're an overcomer. Amen. Pastor Val, can you come on up? And I want to pray for you guys today. Amen. Holy cow, I only preached for 15 minutes. It's amazing. I'm sorry, 13 minutes. I do? What's my motive? The bills. <laughs> the Buffalo Bills are overcomers in Jesus' name. <laughs> so don't worry about the bills. Jesus is an overcomer. Oh, boy. We'll see. Every time I do that, they lose horribly. <laughs> All right. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Well, let's just close our eyes. I want to pray for you today. Can we all stand up real quick as we get ready to go? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you speak to people and help them realize that through Jesus, they are overcomers. That you created every person in this earth with breath in their lungs to be overcomers. That, Lord God, your perfect will for our life is to fulfill the calling that you've given to us. 
You said in Jeremiah that before we were even in our mother's wombs, you knew us and you had a plan for us. Lord, you said that, that, um, that if we love you with all of our hearts, Lord, and that if you're a delight, that you give us the desires of our hearts. Lord, when our hearts are lined up with your heart, Lord, things happen. So today isn't about us making you do something that we want you to do. Today is about us coming underneath you to say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Lord, I thank you that it's not about our past. We've all made many mistakes. I thank you, Lord, that this is about what you did on the cross for us. And today, Lord, as I was preparing this message last night, I felt like today would be a day to welcome some folks home. Home to a place in you where they could feel confident beginning to pray. Home of a place where they had salvation, Lord. Where it says in your word, Lord, if we believe in our hearts and say with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, that we become Christians and we become saved. Lord, home is a place, Lord God, that sometimes for one reason or another, we've gone far away from, Lord. Lord, I know that Jonah, when you spoke to Jonah, he ran away, Father. I know there was even a season in my life, Father God, where I didn't want to do what you wanted me to do. And I went far from home for a little while. But Lord, you are always there, ready to welcome me back, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that today you are here to welcome some folks back to the home, Father God. And I worship you and I thank you that you've done that many times in my life. And you're doing that here today. So today, if you've walked away, peace to you. Peace to you. Know that God is not judging you. He loves you. And he, yeah, yeah, he's judging your sin and the things that you've done wrong. But he's willing and ready to forgive you. And yeah, you've run to things that try to that would make me feel you fulfilled for a little while. But each time you feel worse and worse and worse. And yet you still turn to those things that are killing you from the inside out. But I want to let you know that there is hope today for you. That God is there cheering you on, believing in you, ready to jump in and take the wheel, ready to jump in and give you the strength and the courage to stand up against your worst fears, to stand up against these addictions or these hooks that have been destroying you. God is there for you. If you would simply reach out, God would reach in. So today in your heart, we don't need an altar call. <laughs> is you. And sometimes you do altar calls, but not today, Father. Today's a day when it's us. A renewal. Some of us have been Christians for a very long time. And God is talking to you today also. Challenging you to let go of everything and follow Jesus. When Jesus went to Matthew, the tax collector, he said, come follow me. The Bible says in Luke that he left everything. He stood up. Follow Jesus. We can't truly follow Jesus if we're not willing to let go of some things. For some of us, God wants us to call her to a deeper relationship and anointing with him. But we can't do it unless we let go of some of the things in our lives that we're not supposed to have. So I thank you, Father, for salvations happening in this building. And if you've never made Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, let's just pray this prayer together as a family. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. It says in your word, if I believe in my heart and I say with my mouth that you're Lord, that I'll be saved. I'll become a Christian and start walking in you. For people that have walked away from home, some of you walked away because of some hurt and rejection. Some of this hurt and rejection actually happened in the church that you were attending. Some of the rejection you experienced was in your family with an abusive father or an abusive mother. People that were supposed to be taking care of you, but for some reason couldn't. Jesus loves you. He wants to take care of you. So pray this prayer with me, church. 
Say, Father, I'm coming home. I give you this pain. I give you this hurt. And I jump into your arms. I'm sorry, Lord. I should have never walked away. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And for Christians in this room, oh my goodness, God is challenging, and I'm going to use the word us. <laughs> moving, dropping everything and moving, even just a block over, oh man, it was kind of hard. Walking by faith, it was kind of hard. But you know what? God wanted us to move forward, and he wants you to move forward too. And there's some things that you've got to let go of in order to move forward in the Lord. So what I want you to do is I want you to picture right now in your arms what it is that you know that you have that you are supposed to let go of. And I want you to see yourself giving that to Jesus. For some of you, it's cares and concerns. For some of you, it's things in your life that God doesn't want you to, to trust in. It doesn't really matter what it is. Just get, see yourself giving that over to the Lord today. Hallelujah. Some of you guys, it's your pride. Oh, I've been there <laughs> many times. He needs us to be humble. Some of you, it's your hurt. He wants to heal you. We lay that at your feet today. Your praise will. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise.